The World War I trench stove hack, modern preppers still don't understand. Cold can be a cruel enemy. On the front lines of history, there were moments when winter struck harder than bullets, when frostbite claimed more lives than artillery, and when survival depended not on rifles, but on fire. Yet in the frozen battlefields of World War I, something remarkable happened. Soldiers, knee-deep in mud, surrounded by icy wind and the endless echo of conflict, created one of the most effective off-grid heating systems ever used. A system so simple, so efficient, and so adaptable that it still outperforms many modern survival heaters today. This wasn't a factory invention, no blueprint, no instructions, just raw necessity. Cold was the enemy, and the trench stove became the shield. Why the cold was deadlier than firepower. The trenches stretched for hundreds of miles, an endless labyrinth of mud, wire, and misery. Soldiers weren't fighting from tents or barracks. They lived underground, in cramped dugouts carved into wet earth, where rain turned walkways into sludge and the cold seeped through every layer of clothing. During the winter of 1915, temperatures dropped brutally across the European front. Hypothermia crept into bones, frostbite blackened fingers and toes, boots soaked through and never dried. A soldier could freeze before dawn without ever seeing the enemy. Fire should have been the answer. But, you know, lighting a fire in a trench was like shouting your location to the snipers. Smoke meant exposure. Flame meant death. And even if you wanted to risk it, fuel was nearly impossible to find. So soldiers turned to creativity and, well, that stubborn will to live. What the soldiers needed was a heat source that worked quietly, burned slowly and produced almost no smoke. Something compact, something made from the scraps around them, something that didn't need a mountain of wood to run. They began building small, controlled burn stoves out of whatever metal containers they could find, ammunition tins, biscuit cans fuel cans, anything that could hold heat and withstand flame. The genius was in how they controlled the burn. They punched small holes near the bottom for air intake and another row near the top for exhaust. That simple airflow system meant the fuel burned hot and steady instead of fast and smoky. By slowing the oxygen supply, they squeezed every possible drop of heat out of even the worst fuel. Wood chips, coal scraps, charcoal, bacon grease mixed with sawdust, dried mud soaked in oil. If it could burn, it became fuel. And suddenly, soldiers who had been freezing, shivering, teeth rattling in the dark, had warmth. Not just warmth. Hope. Eventually, armies tried to standardize the solution. For the British troops, the official answer came in the form of a small, portable tin filled with solidified alcohol gel. Soldiers called it the Tommy Cooker. It could heat a canteen of water, warm up a stew, or, you know, keep numb fingers from turning blue. But supplies ran out fast. War does that, so the soldiers returned to improvisation. One of the most common DIY designs was made from an empty fuel can known as a Primus tin. The men punched airflow holes, sometimes attached a pipe for ventilation, placed a small grill or metal plate over the top, and fed the flame with whatever they had. In dugouts, some even added makeshift chimneys made from rifle casings or bent metal tubing to push smoke outside. What really mattered was efficiency invisibility, and longevity. You know, a trench stove could burn for hours on just a handful of fuel. And the best part? It could be built in just a few minutes. That right there is survival engineering at its finest. The trench stove wasn't just clever, it was actually scientifically sound. By concentrating heat inside the metal chamber and narrowing the oxygen flow, the fire burned clean and hot. It produced more usable heat with less fuel, which is pretty impressive. 
It kept smoke to a whisper, and it even prevented the flame from eating up all the oxygen in those cramped dugouts. You know, this same principle actually forms the core of modern rocket stoves and bushcraft heaters. And honestly, you can still replicate the trench stove today with nothing but a tin can, a knife, and a bit of time. Efficiency is, well, timeless. As the war dragged on, engineers and experienced soldiers refined the idea. Larger dugouts and command posts, they needed more heat than a small tin stove could give. So, they built barrel stoves connected to underground flue pipes. The heat traveled through the buried channels, warming the floor and walls before venting safely above ground. It was quiet, safe, and honestly, shockingly effective. Some trench systems even developed double-chamber stoves that recycled warm air to boost efficiency by nearly half. In a place where every piece of fuel was fought for, that really mattered. These upgrades turned underground bunkers from freezing crypts into, well, livable shelter. This is the same principle behind many off-grid cabin heating systems still used today. So the trench stove didn't just disappear, it actually evolved and, well, it survived. You know, the true value of the trench stove isn't just historical, it's practical. It really teaches us something essential. Survival isn't about gear. It's about understanding how fire, air, and fuel all work together. The soldiers of World War I didn't have propane or electricity, or, you know, fancy camp stoves. They had metal scraps, cold hands, and honestly, a refusal to die. And that was enough. You can still build the same stove today. You can still heat a shelter with almost nothing. You can still cook, warm, and endure, with just knowledge and resourcefulness. That is wisdom from the front lines. If you found this breakdown valuable, share it with someone who appreciates real survival history. And don't forget, subscribe to Wisdom from the Frontlines for more forgotten skills, real lessons, and lost ingenuity that still matters today.